Hi, I'm Pastor Cheryl Pickford. I want to thank you for joining me today for this message titled, Cloudy with a Chance of Rapture. We know that Jesus will return for his church one day. But exactly when that day is, it's a little unclear. The details are a little cloudy. Hence, we live with the expectation that it could happen at any moment. Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? You know, there's a great deal of confusion concerning this future event, and in today's message, I hope to answer three questions. What is the rapture? When is the rapture? And who will be raptured? Our text today can be found starting with John 14, verses 2 to 3. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I, I would have told you because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. We'll also be looking at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. Listen very carefully. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth decreed by God and previously hidden but now revealed. We will not all sleep in death, but we will all be completely changed, wondrously transformed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call. For a trumpet will sound and the dead who believe in Christ will be raised imperishable. And we will be completely changed, wondrously transformed. For this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature. And this mortal part of us that is capable of dying must put on immortality, which is freedom from death. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians also, beginning in chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way proceed into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will be simultaneously caught up, raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. And lastly, take a look at Revelation 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, like the sound of a war trumpet speaking with me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after these things. Please join me in prayer. Ah, oh, Heavenly Father, we look so forward to your return. Thank you for the promises that you have given us, that you will spare your bride from the wrath, the coming wrath, that's going to be poured out on this world. Help us prepare our hearts, Lord, to be ready to meet you at any moment. I say, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. And pray this in your precious name. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first question I hope to answer is, what is the rapture? Well, let's take a look back at 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. Listen very carefully. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth decreed by God and previously hidden but now revealed. We will not all sleep in death, but we will all be completely changed, wondrously transformed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call. For a trumpet will sound, and the dead who believed in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we will be completely changed, wondrously transformed. For the perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature, and this mortal part of us that is capable of dying must put on immortality, which is freedom from death. Now, some people, Paul's talking about the rapture here, but some people will tell you 
that the rapture is a myth because the word rapture isn't found in the Bible. And while the English word rapture is not included in our translations, the words in the original language mean caught up. The word used in the Greek is harpazo. It means to seize, carry off by force, to seize on, claim for oneself eagerly, and to snatch out or away. And that is exactly what the rapture means. Now, some people will tell you that the idea of the rapture is, oh, it's a man-made myth that was created by J.N. Darby in 1830. Well, in contrast to this, the early church fathers fully believed that Jesus would return for them in their lifetimes. They taught the church to stand firm in many trials of the day, but to encourage one another with the blessed hope of Christ's imminent return. Scholars have found sermons dating back to medieval times that teach an imminent rapture. But by the fifth century, with the rise of the Catholic Church, the rapture tradition fell out of use based on the writings of Origen and Augustine. After over a thousand years of suppression, premillennialism began to be revived after the Reformation. By the late 1500s and early 1600s, premillennialism began to return as a factor within mainstream Protestantism. And even today, there are scholars reading through many Latin manuscripts of previously unpublished documents that have found several un previously unknown pre-tribulation rapture statements from pre-19th century Christendom. What these pre-Darby rapture statements prove, if nothing else, that indeed others did see the rapture taught in scripture similar to the way that pre-tribulationists in our own day teach. Thus the argument that no one ever taught pre-tribulation until J.N. Darby in 1830 is not just, it's just not historically true. And it has become increasingly clear with each passing year as more and more of these Latin manuscripts are translated. At the sound of God's trumpet, believers who have died and the believers who are still living will be caught up, raptured, transformed to heaven. So when is this wonderful event going to take place? Well, that's a little cloudy. John chapter 14 verses 2 to 3 says, now this is Jesus talking, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If, I, if they were not so, I would have told you. Because I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back again and I'll take you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. Well, Jesus told his disciples that he was going away to prepare a place for them in his father's house. When it's ready, he'll come back and take us there. But we have to look at the wedding traditions of Jesus' time because they were very different than our modern day ceremonies. In Bible times, a couple would be betrothed, which was a legal arrangement. They were in the process of being legally married. The groom would pay a bride price to the girl's father and a covenant was sealed by drinking a glass of wine. Jesus paid our bride price with his blood on Calvary. Then the groom would return to his father's house and begin adding on a room for his future bride. If anyone were to ask him, when's the wedding going to be? He would reply, only my father knows. He couldn't bring her home until the father inspected the room and made sure that it met his specification and, you know, was satisfaction, his level of satisfaction was fulfilled. When the father approved, the groom and his friends would return to the bride's home, blowing a shofar or a trumpet, and then carry her through the air on a chair to his father's house, where the wedding ceremony was finalized by a party that lasted an entire week. Now the bride and her maids were waiting. This process could take as long as a year, and she needed to be ready and listening for the bridegroom's approach. When the trumpet was sounded, she and her maids needed to be ready at a moment's notice. The bride usually slept with her veil beside her bed. 
Jesus told the parable of the foolish and wise virgin, virgins, excuse me, which pictures the need to always be ready for his return. So Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were sensible, or excuse me, five of them were foolish, thoughtless, silly, and careless. And five were wise, far-sighted, practical, and sensible. But when the foolish took their lamps, they did not bring any extra oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delayed, they all began to nod off and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, look! The bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins got up and put their lamps in order, trimmed the wicks and added oil and lit them. But the foolish virgins said to the wise, Get some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, otherwise there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy oil for yourselves. But while they were going away to buy oil, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut and locked. Later, others also came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I do not know you. We have no relationship. Therefore, be on the alert, be prepared and ready. For you do not know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. My friends, don't be misled by anyone who claims to know the exact date and time of the rapture. There are many theories floating around out there as there have been in the past. I'm just saying, don't sell all your stuff and sit on a mountaintop and wait for Jesus to show up. We need to be busy doing the Lord's work until the moment he returns for his church. So are you ready for the Lord's return? Are you listening for the sound of the trumpet? We need to be alert and prepared because only God knows when this event will take place, but it will happen. This is a signless event, meaning that there will not be a specific sign to tell us that it's about to occur, but it is the next event on God's prophetic timetable. So who will be raptured? Well, we're going to look for answers of this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 through 18. For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way proceed into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command and the voice of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the dead, of, dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up, raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words concerning our reunion with believers who have died. Now, Paul wrote the, these words to challenge believers to comfort and encourage, encourage one another when loved ones died. <clears throat> Excuse me. These passages can be a great comfort when any believer dies. Because Jesus Christ came back to life, so will all believers. All Christians, including those living when he returns, will live with Jesus forever. We don't need to despair when loved ones die or when world events take a tragic turn. God will turn our tragedies into triumphs, our poverty to riches, our pain to glory, and our defeat to victory. All believers throughout history will stand reunited in God's very presence, safe and secure. As Paul comforted the Thessalonians with the promise of this resurrection, we should comfort and reassure one another with this great hope as well. I believe that the rapture will not only include all believers, but also all children who are under the age of accountability. And that is why it is so important for parents to teach their children about Jesus and his great love for them. 
now just prior to the rapture, as Christ is ascending from heaven for his church, the resurrection of the dead in Christ will occur. This is not the same resurrection as described in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. For the latter is an event occurring after Christ returns to earth, destroys the wicked, and binds Satan. The, rev the resurrection of Revelation 20, verse 4, relates to the martyred dead of the tribulation. Now at the same time, as the dead in Christ rise, Living believers will be transfigured. Their bodies will be clothed with immortality. And this happens in a very short time, in the twinkling of an eye. Now both the resurrected believers and the transfigured believers will be caught up together to meet Christ in the air, in the atmosphere between earth and heaven. They will be visibly united with Christ, taken to his Father's house in heaven, and united with loved ones who have died. They'll be removed from all distress, from all persecution and oppression. For the entire realm, they'll be removed from the entire realm of sin and from death. This rapture delivers them from the coming wrath, the great tribulation. The hope that our Savior will return to take us out of the world to be with the Lord forever is the blessed hope of all the redeemed. The Bible insists on a continual waiting with eagerness for the return of our Lord. So believers today must continue to be watchful and hopeful for Christ's return to take them to our, himself. The portion of the professing church that fails to abstain from evil and is unfaithful to Christ will be left behind. They will remain as part of the apostate church and they will be subject to God's wrath. Salvation will still be possible for those left behind, but they will pay for that decision with their lives when the Antichrist rules the world. When John was exiled in the, on the Isle of Patmos, God revealed to him the future events that will take place after the rapture. So look at Revelation 4 verse 1. John writes, After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard was like the sound of a war trumpet speaking to me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must, must take place after these things. The church is not mentioned again in Revelation until it returns in Revelation 19 with Christ. And during the seven years of the great tribulation here on earth, the church will be in heaven celebrating the wedding feast of the Lamb. I hope this message, through this message, you'll know that the rapture is a very, very real event. We don't know exactly when it will occur, occur and it applies only to true believers in Jesus Christ. So are you a true believer in Jesus? If you've never asked him to be your personal Lord and Savior, man, you need to do that today. He could return for his church even before this message is finished, and you don't want to be left behind. When the church is removed from the earth, all hell will literally break out on this planet. God will pour out his wrath on an unbelieving world. And if you don't believe me, just read the book of Revelation. This is the final book of the Bible. See what's ahead for those who have rejected Christ. If you've been thinking about committing your life to Jesus, but just haven't gotten around to it yet, please take a moment and talk to God in prayer. Tell him that you know you're a sinner, that you've broken his rules. Ask him to forgive you. Accept the payment of your sins that Jesus paid on the cross and ask God to make you his child. He'll send the Holy Spirit to help you live a God-pleasing life. Start reading your Bible and find a Bible-believing church. You know, not all buildings that call themselves churches are committed to following God's ways. Many today have embraced their own view of social justice and other social norms instead of standing for the truth of the Bible that God teaches. Ask God to help guide you to a true church where you can grow in knowledge of the Lord and expand your social circle to include strong believers in Christ. 
I believe our time is short. Christ could return at any moment for his church. And I pray that you are ready. Thanks for joining me today. And I pray that the Lord will bless, bless you richly until we meet again.